Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease PvP walkthrough. And in this one, I'm going to be going through my thoughts on Restoration Druid against a Turbo Cleave, otherwise known as an Arms Warrior, an Enhancement Shaman, and a Mistweaver Monk. It's a quite a common composition, and we may have all been noticing the trend right now. Resto Druid not doing too great. Mistweaver doing fantastically well. If you have a Mistweaver available on your account, I would highly suggest switching over from your Restoration Druid. I'm doing my best, though to make it work for all of you out there the poor unfortunate souls that are stuck with it i'm doing my best to try and make it work and try different things in this specific game i was not running it but photosynthesis has actually proven to be quite effective as a single target heal and could be useful to you if you are interested in trying it i found it later on in this q session but i wanted to go over my thoughts here in this specific matchup and more importantly as a resto druid playing with a mage and what comes into that so you'll want to make sure that you watch through the entire video to know all the situations when you want to look for cyclones because as playing with a mage and a melee class, you need to be looking for Cyclones if you want to find victory. If you do not, you will not have enough crowd control to execute for a kill. But playing with a mage opens you up for a lot more accessibility in that regard because they can remove the opponents from the fight with Polymorph, which you can then chain off of quite easily. The start of the game, get rejuvenations onto both members and try to figure out who they're going after. This composition can do a lot of things. It can kill anyone on my team. So I picked the lifeline target after seeing them having committed to the mage. As they charge over, I use Inertial's Vortex. My team is trying to get aggressive on the enemy Mistweaver, so I want to try and peel both the Warrior and the Enhancement off my Mage as they start pushing in deeper to switch to the Healer, but they opt to abort that mission. I use Iron Bark here during the Warrior's Avatar. You can see it lasting for five more seconds next to Green TKO. That is Avatar. Powerful cooldown. You almost want to immediately react to that. Because my Mage already blinked, it's unlikely that he can continue kiting or would like to in that immediate second, so Iron Bark soaked all the damage of that avatar. I then look for crowd control on my warrior since my DPS members are still trying to go after the healer. I went for entangling root instead of cyclone because if it's spell reflected, it's not devastating. If it does get if it doesn't, then I just wait and I get a root. Here in this setup, they went for an attempted burst on the Mistweaver, and he portaled away. So I'm pressuring the Mistweaver here, and I'm mostly just threatening a Cyclone, even though that I'm not getting it. But he pops away the Crane, so I don't want to go near him. I avoid him, and I call for my mage to potentially Polymorph. I tell the team, Wave the Crane is up. It's time to abort. Get out of there. So double Frost Nova, Cyclone on the Warrior. Get them crowd controlled and avoid it. During Wave the Crane, unless you can crowd control it, it is unlikely that you will kill them. I move to the Pillar here to line of sight incoming Hex from the Shaman, but it was not on me. I dispelled my mage immediately. Uh, it was fortunately right before this stun where I would not be able to. You want to dispel Hex as soon as possible so you can't get cross EC. I see an opportunity to sneak here for a bash cyclone. I line of sight the shaman with the pillar so he cannot winch her. Even if it wasn't available there, it's still important to position like that. You don't want to be in line of sight of the enemies if you can avoid it while casting Cyclone to avoid being stunned or interrupted. I try my best to continue it for two Cyclones, but after that he was taking a bit too much damage, so I traded Iron Bark to recover, and I had to use Iron Bark to recover from the time that I spent Cycloning in that position. It wasn't necessarily because they used very powerful cooldowns. This is going to open us up a bit here. Now normally as a Shaman is casting Hex, you would want to shapeshift, but as I'm playing with a mage who can remove it, I felt that it was better to just use the global cooldowns to heal over time. Now this strategy in particular, attacking the rest of Druid, seems to be quite powerful and very difficult to deal with. You need to be in bear form. I'm abusing the fact that my Frost Mage has Blizzard and Snares, and whenever my Monk uses a stun, I want to Cyclone out of it. But you can see that powerful cooldown Avatar again from the Warrior, so I use a Swift Men quickly. But I don't want a Barkskin in this position because I'm not stunned, and the Enhancement Shaman isn't hitting me. So even though Avatar is currently active, I can use more powerful heals like Swift Men to heal through it, and I'm only a afraid and using bark skin if I'm stunned or both members are able to attack me. Now we've got crowd control on the monk so I want to get in position to go for potential cyclones although I am staying in bear form because I wasn't certain if they were going to continue attacking me and I go for a bash out of the polymorph and look for a cyclone. Windshear gets soaked by my mage. We both cast crowd control at the same time. When you're trying to go for it on a healer cast at the same time with your mage. This way they can only windshear one of you and you will inevitably get crowd control. Now they do end up pausing the 
fight quite a bit and again dispel that hex as soon as possible switch life limits with the target being focused but in that position my uh, windwalker had to use touch of karma regardless because the damage would have been potentially lethal so touch of karma and ice block are the buttons you press as the last resort, especially if Iron Bark isn't available. If Iron Bark isn't available, you're telling your partners, think about this, Karma or Ice Block. And then if Iron Bark is available, you use that as a priority first. I saw an opportunity to cycle in the Monk because the Shaman was out of wind shear range. I then dropped Inertial's Vortex on top of him while his DPS members are stunned out of line of sight. This is something you want to work on as Restoration Druid, and I do a poor job of, is timing your Cyclones out of each other. And you need to, you need to figure that out yourself. I'm used to playing Boomkin with a different haste coefficient which means that I'm used to casting faster and I can't get the cyclones off at the same. Roughly for my druid, it's anywhere between 1.6 and 1.8 seconds. Somewhere in that range, you start casting it. So cyclone lasts for 1.6 left, start casting clone, you'll land it again instantly without them being able to use an ability. And it's very important and you'll see how devastating it is later in the game that I wasn't able to time it. Now in this position, the monk is polymorph, so I'm pushing up aggressively, and I decide to stun the warrior with no trinket. This is to deny him from activating die by the sword, and also to prevent him from getting counter pressure. But because I'm standing next to the warrior and looking for cyclones, I have to start fake casting interrupts. So I fake cast pummel, and I'm trying to fake cast wind shear, not finding it. But this warrior has avatar, powerful cooldown, 13 seconds left. So I go in bear form and start moving away and use frenzied regeneration. But again, the enhancement shaman is not connecting to me, and I was not in a full stun so I did not use bark skin in this instance of avatar being active my mage has temporal shield and I use iron bark this is an overlap of defensive cooldowns and unnecessary but because they were both connecting and it seems in this position that the mage was unable to avoid damage it ended up being the wise move because they went for further crowd control on me regardless I activated an innervate to go for a cyclone I use Ursula's vortex to pull the mistweaver back in my line of sight but the warrior breaks it up by fearing me denying me from getting to the chain now the monk activates way of the crane I tell my team and we end up making a swap but way of the crane i'm in a stun bear form immediately do not frenzy regeneration into sharpened blade that axe that red axe icon is sharpened blade do not renewal do not use frenzied regeneration into it dispel hex as soon as possible they switch to my windwalker this is the cooldown you want to use before touch of karma which is fortifying brew so if you don't have iron bark it's fortifying brew if fortifying brew isn't enough and you're still going to die touch of karma is then the next cooldown in line i start pushing aggressive because i have bash i want to go for a bash cyclone but look who's next to me the shaman he's got winchers so i have to fake cast that he then uses grounding totem now at this point i'm quite far behind the shaman is connected to me and my mage is stunned so this is a stressful situation and it's likely that i will have to potentially give up on trying to go for cyclones because i'm falling so far behind so instead i go for bear form and i try to kite the enhancement shaman away he decides to run in this position I go for a casted ability and get wind sheared. This is dangerous. They have sharpened blade. We temporal shielded too late. And then we have to overlap iron bark. So all of the result of not expecting the incoming burst, trading cooldowns too late resulted in overlapping cooldowns. So as soon as that wind shear landed, it would have been better to just trade ice block at that point because he was in execute range. Iron bark is not enough once you're in execute range to sustain and survive and in that position it was definitely lethal and should have only been ice block here we get triple polymorph into cyclone and this is where your cyclone timings are important and i mistime it i use a global cooldown and i go for it too late and as a result i end up getting wind sheared and i end up getting leg sweeped if this timing was better it would have been almost guaranteed to end the game right there regardless i still have bash and then i look for cyclones the warriors next to me and able to pummel but the bash is then more than enough to be able to close the game out so at the end of this, what do we learn? We want to be using Iron Bark, Temporal Shield, and Fortifying Brew as our early cooldowns through initial damage. And we want to use Touch of Karma and Ice Block if the damage is going to be more than enough to end the game. Try your best to not overlap any of these, but in some cases, especially against Turbo with how high its sustained damage is, you may have to. But in a position with Ice Block, that should never be the case. Iron Bark and Ice Block should never be overlapped, and you need to just predict that ahead of time if you're wind sheared. Don't try and rely on Iron Bark as an oh my god moment. If it's an oh my god moment, Ice Block is the cooldown that you're going to trade. I hope that this guide was of assistance to you on your Restoration Druid grind. I know it's difficult, the Horde. They burned down Teldrassil and all the little Resto Druids with it. But I'm doing my best to battle through the tides of war to keep Restoration Druid alive in 3v3. And I'll do my best to keep guides going for you guys as I pick up new strategies and potentially new talents along the way. So please consider subscribing to the channel here. I'm uploading guides 
guides every single day. I'm trying to add as many specializations as possible. Been grinding on to make my Holy Paladin playable to get some Holy Paladin guides out there as well. But as always, I appreciate the support. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.